Good evening. I'd like to reconvene the regular Board of Education open session at 7.09 p.m. For tonight's pledge, I'd like to invite Dr. Tarosian to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise, place your right hands over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dr. Terosian. We have limited meetings with you, so I thought I'd take advantage. Um, as far as roll call, I'd like the record to show that all board members are present and ca cabinet members as well. We did hold a closed session and we have no reportable re action item to report on. Dr. Terosian, any changes to the order of business? Yes, President Travanti, members of the board. Uh, action, some corrections have been made to uh, consent item Educational Services 1, the MOU between San Joaquin County Office of Education, and it's included within your packet. Uh, and some corrections have also made be, been made to board uh, policy and administrative regulation 5144.1, uh, including uh, in the original packet, uh, uh, administrative regulation 5144.2 regarding students with disabilities had been included. That is not an agenda item. It should not have been agendized, and that should be pulled from and, the agenda. And that is, just to clarify, that is AR 5144.2, suspension and expulsion due process students with disabilities. That item has been pulled. Point two, correct. Point two. Okay. And additionally, we will be moving board business action items five, if, uh, that same uh, referenced uh, board policy 5144 about suspension and expulsion, as well as board business action item six, uh, board policy regarding equity to follow uh, public comments as members of the policy review committee are joining us via Zoom today. Great, thank you. Uh, and of course, keep me straight on that. I've made my notes, but. Appreciate the guidance. All right, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes from the regular Board of Education meeting dated May 12th, um, and also the Board of Education meeting May 26th. I'd like to propose that we um, run that in one motion. Can I have a motion? So moved. Did I hear a motion? Ron, Ron. Yes, so moved. Oh, second. Thank you. Hello. Motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Huff, can you call roll, please? Board Member Hammond? Yes. Board Member Golar? Yes. Board Member Anderson? Yes. Board Member Lockerbie? Yes. Board President Trevanti? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Ms. Huff. And now on to recognitions and communications. Uh, we do have the honor and privilege to have Assemblyman Chris Holden with us this evening. And if you could come up to the podium. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to be before you today. And certainly, uh, as a proud graduate of public education, public schools in the Pasadena area, I salute all of you for your steadfast stewardship of public education and ensuring that our young people are getting the highest quality of education, competing with any other school system around. And so I congratulate all of you. But uh, President Trevani and board members and superintendent, thank you for giving me an opportunity to come before you today because it's really a special honor that I have to be able to uh, present to you a recognition of your class of 2020 and their accomplishments as being recognized uh, by U.S. News and World Report as fitting into the 13th percentile of top high schools in the nation. And that is an amazing, amazing accomplishment. And so for that class, uh, they continue to set the bar higher. I know that the class of 21 uh, has also done so, uh, and certainly with your early college program, you have in place a really great foundation for continued high achievement amongst our young people as time goes forward. And so it's a pleasure to be able to present to you uh, a recognition from the California State Assembly 
uh, to acknowledge and recognize the amazing contributions of the class of 2020 uh, on April 20 of 2020. Uh, they were recognized as being in that top percentile on one of the most outstanding high schools uh, in the country. And so uh, they didn't do it alone. All of you were very much a part of their success, uh, staff, uh, administrators, the teachers, parents, guardians. Uh, it takes, as they say, a village. And it takes everyone to contribute to make this, this happen. So it's my pleasure uh, to present to you staff the California State Assembly, this resolution which acknowledges Monrovia High School as a 2020 uh, recipient of the U.S. News and World Report top high schools in the nation. There are a lot of whereases in this resolution. I won't go through them <laughs> at this moment, but if I could um, present this to you, Madam President, and to the board, uh, I am honored to be here, and congratulations to all of you. Thank you very much. We accept this on behalf of the board, the district. We have uh, Principal Kirk McGinnis also on the screen. Um, he, his other administrators and staff, have, and, and like you said, parents also, um, it was their accomplishment. So we appreciate you recognizing our wonderful high school night. Thank you very much. Well, let me just say too that for what a special class, right? They had to persevere through some very difficult times um, but you know, we come to seasons in our life and we're there for a reason. We sometimes have to go through some challenges, but it only makes us stronger and more resilient down the road. And this class has certainly demonstrated that. I can't wait to see what kind of accomplishments they're going to make uh, going into world and making a big change that I know that they're going to make. We'll all be able to take part in there and be proud of them. Thank you. Principal very McGinnis, much. did you have students with you as well? I do, uh, and if I can take a moment, uh, good evening, uh, Board President Travanti, members of the school board, Dr. Trosian, cabinet, uh, and community members, and uh, Assembly Member Holden. It is great to see you again. Uh, I've appreciated your visits to Monrovia High School in the past, and I look forward to future visits. Uh, on behalf of Monrovia High School, the entire school community, uh, we appreciate and, and, and are so grateful for the recognition uh, from you and your office. Um, and tonight with me, I am pleased to introduce to you and our community, one of our, our student leaders. Uh, with me tonight, I have uh, 11th grade, Layla Nahara. Uh, she, is a, she is one of our student leaders. We have many on our campus. And uh, she's, she's a student athlete. She participates in many of our advanced placement AP courses on our campus. And uh, I've asked her tonight to join us uh, just to share a few words about um, what, it, what it's like, what, what are some uh, important things that she sees that are happening on our campus, to share a little bit about the programs that she's involved with, and then more importantly, what makes Monrovia High School special. So Layla, I see your name there, now's your turn. Uh, talk a little bit and share with us. Uh, I bragged a little bit about you, but now it's your turn to talk a little bit about what makes Monrovia High School special for you. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, as mentioned already, my name is Leila Nahira. I just completed my junior year at Monrovia High School, and I have been a part of MASA and Renaissance for the past three years. I was exposed to these two great programs at a very young age. My, sis my older sister was a part of them when she attended high school, and I knew very early on that I wanted to be a part of them too. MASA has allowed me to take rigorous math and science courses like AP Calculus and AP Environmental Science. This program has really helped me pave my path for the future and what I hope to pursue after high school. I have participated in ment mentoring each elementary school, teaching them the importance of science and encouraging their curiosity. Through Renaissance, I have learned what it truly means to lead. A leader is not selfish, but courageous and willing to serve others. We call ourselves servant leaders because we aim to provide assistance and guidance for our student body. I have learned to take initiative and step out of my comfort zone and value this program for teaching me these things. MASA and Renaissance have done a great deal of shaping who I have become in the last three years, and I am sad that I will have to say goodbye soon. I am very grateful and honored to be a part of these programs and will continue to share with the world what they have taught me. Thank you. Thank you, Layla. And thank you, uh, thank you again, Assemblymember Holden. My pleasure. 
Thank you, Layla, and thank you, Kirk, for being here. And now if we could take a photo. Yes. All right, great, thanks. Okay, we'll move on to the next item in um, recognitions. The Board of Education would like to congratulate students for their participation in the district PTA reflections, and I will pass it on over to you, Dr. Trozian. Thank you, President Travanti, members of the board. I am delighted to recognize our students from throughout the district and uh, really celebrate their achievements uh, in the PTA Reflections program. I think we have a video that will accompany uh, this as, and we'll post this video on our website so that everybody can see uh, some of the student work. Uh, and I've not seen the video, so we'll just have it run as I read the names, I suppose. Uh, in dance, we have Camber Kika from Wild Rose School of Creative Arts. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Arissa Parias from Plymouth Elementary School, Catherine Regencia from Monrovia High School, uh -huh. and Indiana Thomas from Wild Rose School of Creative Arts. I'm just going to slow down. These are their uh, winning selections. And I, I very much appreciate our uh, Council PTA and the Reflection Chair f uh, for putting this together. Uh, in uh, film production, we have Abigail Banuelas wi from Wild Rose School of Creative Arts, Islay Cowie from a Monrovia Monroe Elementary School, Naya Ellis from Wild Rose School of Creative Arts, Emmanuel Gonzalez from Santa Fe, Computer Science Magnet School, Josiah Aquiles from Monroe Elementary School, and Olive Westra from Monroe Elementary School. In literature, we have Aziz Darye from Santa Fe Computer Science Magnet School, Madeline Moe from Plymouth Elementary School, Ella Salinas from Monroe Elementary School, Amira Mire Sora from Clifton Middle School, 
and Lavette Don from Santa Fe Computer Science Magnet School. And I understand, I, I don't have any. And Cassidy Rose from Pratt Oaks Element, uh, Elementary Science Academy. Thank you. Uh, in music composition, we have Annabella Mercado from Monroe Elementary School and Arissa Prarias from uh, Plymouth Elementary School. In photography, we have Caleb Alarcon from Wild Rose School of Creative Arts, Peter Atia from Monrovia High School, Luis Bernal from Monrovia High School, Emmanuel Garcia from Monrovia High School, Esther Curisa from Brad Oaks El Elementary Science Academy, Micah Curisa from Brad Oaks Elementary Science Academy, and Madison Malgen from Santa Fe Computer Science Magnet School. In visual arts, we have Emma Arellano from Monroe Elementary School, Taylor Arellano from Monroe via high school, Cheyenne Cerny from Monrovia High School, Ryan Covey from Clifton Middle School, Amelia De La Torre from Monroe Elementary School, Ashley Godbold from Monrovia High School, Ricardo Ibarra from Monrovia High School, Giselle James from Santa Fe Computer Science Magnet School, Esther Carrizo from Brad Oaks Elementary Science Academy, Abigail Martinez from Monroe Elementary School, Sophia, Sophie Rabaya from Santa Fe Computer Science Magnet School, Emmerich Schultz from Wild Rose School of Creative Arts, and Lillian Wadahara from Wild Rose School of Creative Arts. Thank you to all of our PTA Reflections participants and congratulations to the winners and thank you for, to the PTA for constantly supporting our students. Big round of applause for those entries. Thank you. It looks like we had some really good participation. So I look forward to watching that video on, on my own so I can listen to the music also. Um, on to the public comments. The Board of Education encourages public participation, invites you to share your views on school business. Ms. Huff, are there any public comments um, for non-agenda items? Uh, are we doing board member reports? Did we totally miss the reports? Thank you, Ms. Huff. And we'll move on to board member reports, and I believe you're up first, right, Celine? Okay. Yes, Ms. Huff, if you wouldn't mind, just um, we have a collection of pictures from the Canyon Early Learning Center and the elementary um, promotions that happened this week and all were so exciting and that was CELC, Brad Oaks, Monroe, Plymouth, Mayflower, and Wild Rose. And we all got to attend different um, promotions and congratulations fifth graders, you're now middle schoolers and we're so excited for all of you. It was beautiful. Thank you, Celine. In middle school? Am I doing that? You're also okay, doing I'm also going to report. <laughs> You're doing such a great job, Celine. Just continue. On the middle school, and that would be Clifton and Santa Fe Computer um, Science Magnet. And again, it was just, they, they were both so beautiful. And um, I, I noticed one, of the, one thing that um, so many people mentioned is, we should do this again next year. And um, to see, it was outside in our, uh, our beautiful arena out here, and everyone was able to be together and come together and celebrate together. And both of them were absolutely amazing. And both of the middle schools did an in-person um, graduation that was socially distanced and also a drive-by um, drive -by pro pro procession. Um, that was attended by all and enjoyed by all. So thank you both um, middle school administrators, teachers and staff. You made it such a wonderful event. Thank you, Celine. 
And Tracy? I see there. I'm going to do, okay. All righty. Well, um, Monday evening, June 7th, was the senior award tonight. It was held virtually for our uh, graduating seniors. And um, Principal Kirk McGinnis gave a very warm welcome and introduction. And it was hosted by uh, Mr. Duff, Sean Duff, and Ryan Minlove. There were 44 different scholarships given out. There were 125 different seniors who received these scholarship funds and a total amount given $114,000 uh, in scholarship funds. They range from $50, $250, $500, 750, 800, 1,000, 1,100, 1,700, 2,000, and 4,000 um, dollars of scholarships given to individual uh, students. It was truly a demonstration of the support and commitment that we have in our community for our uh, MHS graduating seniors. So it was very nice. And being virtual, I think it lasted an hour and maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Thank you, Tracy. And Jennifer. Thank you. Um, so last night we had our culminating graduation at Monrovia High School. Um, the excitement and enthusiasm for graduation was truly palpable. Uh, I know that while we have masks, masks on a lot throughout all of these graduations, I found myself smiling so much that my face was hurting and I had a mask on, so no one even got to see it. Um, that's just how exciting and how glad I think everybody was to be together. Um, last night, uh, for me personally, were memories I will never forget as I was um, accepting the class of 2021. Um, there's my son. I didn't cry as I accepted them. I want it noted. Um, there were bets, I think, maybe, on whether I would make it through or not, and I did. Um, but I'm so proud of this class. These are, these are students that some of I've known since birth and some since kindergarten, and they were just jubilant. And the sheer joy and fierce pride and the community spirit um, I just wanted to shout, we're back. You know, this was, this was truly, it was the first time that these seniors were all on campus together for this year, and it was the last time. And it was such a meaningful event to have us all together in this beautiful city, looking up into our foothills with our M lit up. And I'm, I'm, it was just a memory to cherish. So thank you, Monrovia. This was a, it was a great night. And congratulations to all of our seniors. Thank you, Jennifer. And continuing with the graduation theme, um, Monrovia Unified Adult School um, held their drive-through graduation on May 27th. Uh, several of us board members, along with Dr. Tarosian, Dr. Sue Kaiser, and Dr. Ja uh, Darvin Jackson attended the adult um, school drive-through. Graduates were from our pharmacy tech um, and nurse assistant programs and ready to begin their new careers. And it was wonderful to see so many graduates already in their scrubs. So uh, next year, the adult school will have all of their programs back and running. That's a little plug, if you know anybody. <laughs> that. Um, and earlier this week, we held the drive through graduation for Canyon Oaks and Mountain Park graduates. What a great event this was. And I have to give kudos to all the administrators out there and all the teacher staff. This is a very special group of administrators and teachers who virtually handhold some of these students to the finish line, making house calls, delivering books, signs, and even caps and gowns when they were not picked up. So uh, they really go above and beyond, and I know some of these students would not have graduated if it wasn't for their persistence and personal care. So congratulations to all the graduates and those who promoted in the district. It was definitely a great week. Okay, and now um, that's it for board reports. Uh, sorry, Rob, did you have anything? I didn't ask you before. Are you good? Okay. Dr. Tarosian. 
Thank you, and let me add my congratulatory notes, not just to the graduates and to those students promoting, to, but to the entire Monrovia uh, Unified School District staff. Everybody played a role in the success of our students. Everybody uh, plays a role in, in the education of our children. And whether you're in the classroom or behind the scenes, you're setting the table for our students to be able to learn. And uh, without everybody's innovative uh, and resilient approach to education this year, we would not have had the successes that we did. And last night was a remarkable success. It, it is the close of one of, of a historic year and it is the commencing and the embarking on a, a brand new journey for all of our students. And next year will be better. But for this year, I, I hope every staff member understands and uh, recognizes how much we appreciate their efforts. Uh, leadership was hard this year. And so a special thank you to uh, the administrators who are making decisions and then changing them because the rules kept changing and they continue to have to pivot and lead with a smile and calm and grace and they did so uh, so perfectly and so thank you to them. Uh, we also have two more graduates and I'd like to introduce them today. Uh, from a different program, from the University of Southern California, fight on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have newly minted doctors, Dr. Jennifer Jackson and Dr. Janie Nichols with us. One of the things we like to do is share the latest research. We are a research-driven organization. We are an educational institution. We like to keep learning, and when our people uh, reach that pinnacle and become experts in that field, it's so important to continue to learn from them. And we have with us uh, Jennifer and Janie, doctors Jackson and Nichols, who successfully defended their dissertation and have uh, graduated from the Rossier School of Education. And I'd like to turn it over to them so that they can share with us their uh, study and bring us some of the latest research in the field. Thank you, Dr. Tarosian. Good evening, Board President Trevanti, members of the board, Dr. Tarosian cabinet, and members of the Monrovia community. First of all, we would like to start on behalf of both of us to thank all of you, the Board of Education and Dr. Tarosian for supporting us in this endeavor as we embarked on a journey of a doctoral degree three years ago. You all have been instrumental in participating with us, both in our pilot study and our real dissertation research. Although we did not get to interview you all as part of our study, our cohort member did. We are super grateful for your support and your participation. And tonight we're gonna to give you a brief glimpse into that study. So to begin, our study was to examine the impact of the California School Board Association's Master's in Governance Training Program for School Board members. All right, so the purpose of the study, a little bit of background. The Governing Board requires specific knowledge and skills in a multitude of areas in order to face the complexities of informed decision making. This being said, school governance teams should be committed to ongoing training that not only enhances their working relationships, but also gives them the required expertise to serve successfully. So the purpose of this study was to determine if CSBA's Masters in Governance Training, or MIG, as we'll see in this later on the slides, improved relations between school board members and superintendents, influenced school board members and the ability to govern effectively, and improve student learning outcomes as perceived by board members and superintendents. Next slide, please. In looking at this map, there were 12 counties that were included in our study, representing different areas of, throughout the state of California. And in the bottom corner there was the basis of our research. 
based upon triangulation of data using an extensive literature review, theoretical frameworks, and qualitative data in the form of surveys and interviews. Yes, next slide, please. So the research team consisted of 20 members with each member being responsible for data collection in three school districts. A total of 186 school board members and 62 superintendents were identified as meeting the criteria to participate in the study. Of the 186 survey links sent out, 180 school board members surveyed were received and 177 interviews were conducted. 100% of the superintendent surveys and interviews were completed. Next slide, please. We had three research questions with the first being, what factors impact the decision of school board members to participate in the MIG training program? And this brought about three emergent themes, the desi desire to learn and self-motivation, which consists of board members gaining knowledge, being more effective in their roles and being more prepared to serve. The second emergent theme was encouragement, cultural expectation and influence, which included the culture of the board, board continuity and mutual accountability. And finally, accessibility was the third emergent theme, which involved proximity to the training, convenience of the training, frequency and time commitment. Next slide. So the second research question you see before you um, led to three primary themes. The first theme is that MIG clearly defined the roles and responsibilities by establishing protocols and clear procedures. The second theme is that MIG equips and encourages the governing team to have a vision and to set the direction for the district. And as a representative of the community, board members must integrate the voice of their constituents with the ideas or innovation of their educators, which is pretty challenging. The third theme is that MIG training strongly encourages relationships and cohesiveness. The effectiveness of school governance relies deeply on the board members ability to work cohesively towards common goals while focusing on the best interests of students. Through the data collected, it was found that MIG training emphasized the unity of the governing board and how essential it is, it is in order to exercise their authority and build trust with the people they represent. Next slide, please. The third research question we identified was, does MIG training have an impact on student achievement and growth? Which probably was one of the most interesting research questions of our three. Mm -hmm. And what we found were three emergent themes as well. There was definitely an indirect impact on student achievement due to board members setting policy, making informed decisions, and setting priorities for the school district. The second theme of allocating resources and providing support were dependent upon the hiring of high quality people, the professional learning that was provided within the district and the materials to support that learning. And finally, conditions for success were, was a factor. Board members operated with a student-centered approach, an instructional focus, a reliance on data and their mindset did matter. So implications of our study. We examined the common themes to, to summarize our implications. MIG training provides opportunities for attendees to learn and understand their roles and responsibilities that equip them to be, be better leaders with regard to the essential functions of the school district. This establishes a sense of shared leadership built upon common knowledge that coincides with research that has the potential to improve student outcomes because each team member acquires a level, level of expertise to lead and communicate effectively. Participation in MIG is impacted by proximity of location, time constraints, cost, and a lack of a mandate. Flexibility in MIG training should include more locally hosted and hybrid online training programs where there is a blend of in-person training as well as completing a part of the module online. This would allow participants to work around their schedule while maintaining the value of in-person training where board members found networking with others from outside their district so beneficial. Next slide. 
our team came up with a variety of things that are recommendations for future research based on our study. And it would be interesting uh, to study school districts where 100% of the governance team members were trained. Our criteria only entailed the majority of the school board being trained in at least one module. Also to conduct research on the effectiveness of each MIG training module, maybe increasing the sample size to include more than just the 12 counties we studied in California, and to also conduct observations of official school board meetings of MIG trained school governance teams while they're in action. Additionally, further recommendations for, re for future research should include comparing, comparing states whose mandates school board training with those who don't have it and it's voluntary. And this would be interesting to see if there was any difference in the impact a formal training has on school governance. Um, comparing large urban counties with small suburban counties, this would allow researchers to identify the consistency in how MIG training truly impacts governance and student achievement. Um, comparing the different types of formalized training offered will allow educators to see which type of training is most impactful and beneficial to its participants. And finally, comparing productivity and school achievement factors for MIG trained and non-MIG trained school governance teams would be helpful in finding out if the impact would be equally positive to their corresponding districts. So thank you so much for your time. We learned a lot and like, I'm just gonna say it again, Jen and I really, really valued your input. Um, we have an amazing board and we are just so thankful for your support and, and learning with us. You model what it means to be lifelong learners and we were just so thankful to have your support. Do you have any questions for us at this time? I wanna say, first of all, thank you very much uh, for the presentation and the learning experience that we went along with you. Um, so I'm gonna open it up to the board if you have any questions. I would just, just like congratulations. To yeah, Thank congratulations. You. And this this is fascinating. Thank you. This is this is a really important part as a new board member. Um, there's there's a lot to learn. And, and so I, I really appreciated listening to your your findings. Thank you. You know, as you were presenting, I was thinking back at the when I was interviewed by you, Jennifer Jackson, and I believe it was a Clifton dance. And we kind of um, I volunteered that night and we snuck into one of the classrooms and that's when you interviewed me and I, I still recall that. Um, but thank you very much. I, I have found the Master in Governance classes very important, um, mm -hmm. one more than the other. I, this year I took one that specialized in hiring a superintendent mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, that was really timely. <laughs> <laughs> so you can take that with you, but um, yeah, I, I have enjoyed the experiences I've had so far. But again, I think the newer you, newer you are as a school board member, the more you're going to get out of those. But thank you very much for your presentation tonight, and congratulations to you both. Thank yes, you. and I was, I was uh, while you were um, speaking, Maritza and I looked at each other, and, and we remembered being being interviewed, and Dr. Nichols, I remember you interviewing me and and I remember you saying you were nervous and I remember thinking wow I'm nervous <laughs> we're both nervous so it was really um, exciting it was so exciting to be part of your dissertation and mm -hmm. the research and um, so exciting to know that you were both doing this and then you know it's to to be able to be your cheerleaders and your your supporters as you went through this and uh, we thank you so much for the incredible dedication and work and time um, that you put into this this was it was really exciting and congratulations thank you thank you thank you Okay. And that concludes my report. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Terosian. Wait, I I, I oh, wait, recall I have. Uh, I did also want to mention that uh, we had an opportunity to dedicate the Wellness Center at Monrovia High School to Susan Hirsch, renaming it the Susan Hirsch Wellness Center. It was uh, such a, a tribute to her and to her vision finally being right realized and uh, she without that she was a force of nature and she made sure that that 
that there was a place on campus for students. And uh, it is one where she crafted it based upon needs and it will become a model in the state uh, as we continue to uh, identify student needs and think outside the box about how we need to meet those needs of our students. Uh, and we have our student artist, uh, Casey. Casey Clark. Casey Clark. Who graduated last night. Uh, and Krista. it was, Krista. it really was a special event. And thank you to the Monrovia High School team for uh, seeing Susan's legacy and vision and m moving it forward. And if I may, um, I'd like to thank uh, school board clerk Tracy Golar for bringing it forward to the board for us to vote on and name um, the Wellness Center after Susan Hirsch. So thank you for that. And that concludes your report. Right again, President Trevanti. <laughs> All right, thank you. Now we'll move on to public comments. The Board of Education encourages public participation and invites you to share your views on school business. Ms. Huff, do we have any items for non-agenda? There are none. Thank you. And do we have any public comments for agenda items? There are none. Thank you, Ms. Huff. And then we are moving up a couple items, I believe. Get to those. Okay, items number five, um, we have board policy 5144.1, suspension, expulsion, due process, and accompanying administrative regulations. Dr. Jackson. Good evening, Board President Trevanti, members of the board, Dr. Tarosian, cabinet, and the community. The board, board of Education is requested to receive, for first reading, board policy 5144.1, suspension and expulsion, due process, and its accompanying administrative regulations as recommended by the California School Boards Association. I wanna take a moment to uh, thank Mari Bardona, our Interim Director of Student Support Services who uh, con continues to conduct uh, annual reviews of the department's board policies. She continues to work diligently uh, to revise these and, and other ones that we will be bringing forward this evening uh, and within the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, this policy has been reviewed by board member Golar, uh, the P policy review committee, which we have some members here uh, this evening with us, uh, as well as other appropriate instructional stakeholders, inclusive um, the student support committee comprised of administrators, certificated and classified staff, as well as uh, parents and secondary students. As the board desires to provide district students access to educational opportunities, in a safe, positive learning environment. This board policy and the accompanying AR regulation contained herein establishes the rules and regulations that set the standards of behavior expected of district students and then the disciplinary processes and procedures for addressing violations of those standards, including suspension and or expulsion. Finally, the changes and deletions are indicated in the strike throughs and the new policy is highlighted in red and aligns with current Monrovia Unified School District procedures. Any questions for uh, the policy review committee, myself and or uh, Ms. Bardona? Board members, any questions? Since we have some committee members with us this evening, if they wouldn't mind turning on their cameras and um, are they gonna talk on the next one? Okay, I wanted to have a better understanding of, of the process at the committee, so in the next one we can talk about that? Okay, thank you. Ms. Lockerbie has a question. I have a question and I was just uh, wanting to cl clarify some procedure there. I appreciate the patience. So under authority to expel, a student may be expelled only by the board 
and then there is a list of um, weapons and dangerous instruments. So I'm on page three of nine. Okay. So it's a firearm, selling or otherwise furnishing a firearm, brandishing a knife at another person, controlled substance, sexual assault, possessing an explosive as defined in 18 U.S.C. 921. I'm wondering if um, pepper spray falls into any of that. My expert is, expert is informing me pepper spray does not. Okay. That's my question. And that's best uh, based on ed code, ed code language. Okay. Thank you. So please explain for me. So the possession of pepper spray on campus. Come to the board. It, it's not allowed. I think I read your. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> President Trevanti, members of the board, Dr. Therosian, community members, cabinet. Um, would you ask that question again and refer me to the three of nine you were asking about so dangerous I'm on instruments? Page three of nine. Under authority to expel, and it, it is students found to have committed any of the following acts at school, and it has a list of basically weapons or um, offenses. And I'm wondering if pepper spray is in there. Pepper spray would actually actually be considered a dangerous object, and okay. there is a different ed code for that, and it's not a mandatory expulsion. It doesn't fall under the expellable offenses, but it is a dangerous object, so it would be under a different education code. Okay. And, and then it has a different set of <coughs> circumstances it around it being wielded or used. Yes. As a, because it is a dangerous object. Yes. Thank you for the clarifi uh, clarification. And, and to clarify, it is not a mandatory ex, uh, expulsion. However, depending upon what the occurred, an expul uh, it is a potential expulsion. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes. Yeah. I, w I would just like to thank the um, po uh, Policy Review Committee. This is This is a lot of very dense reading and very critical um, policy. And I know it takes a lot of time and, and having um, read through some of these previously. So thank you for all of your time and effort and your thoughtful consideration as you read through this um, to make sure that we craft policy that is beneficial for, for everyone. Thank you. Um, thank you, Jennifer, and I, I echo what Jennifer just stated. This is this is not easy, uh, and, and and I do this for a living, policy, <laughs> and I look at this and and my eyes um, kind of bug out. There's a lot to the these policies, and the committee um, is a committee of volunteers. They're doing this on their own time, and we truly appreciate their dedication to make making sure our policies are clear concise in line with um, ed code and that are they are fair and equitable and that is the goal so thank you very much um, i have no further questions or comments thank you. and this is the first reading so we're not taking action okay and then on to uh, number six Wait. board policy madam president yes <coughs> I'm sorry. If there's no if there's no changes to it, can it come back on consent? If the if the board wishes this to come back on consent, we can go ahead and do that. If there's okay. no changes to the policy. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Jennifer has a question. I just have a question. Um, I had a, a number of questions and potential clarifications that aren't in print. If we bring it back on consent, 
are those, if there are any updates? Was it only in 5144.2? Okay. And that's the um, item that was pulled. Okay. I, I, I think there were some minor issues. Okay. You'd probably want to address them here. This Got was it. the Got one it. that we have Sorry. in front of us is the corrected one. Uh, okay. Based on Ms. Anderson's. Okay. Thank you. I right. thank you for the clarification. I'm, I'm. That's fine. Okay. And then just pulling point two. So we're just right now bringing back to consent fifty one forty four point one. Okay. So then we'll bring that back on consent. Moving on to board policy zero four one five equity. Dr. Jackson. Thank you. The Board of Education is requested to receive for first reading board policy 0415 equity as recommended by the California School Boards Association. Uh, thank you again to Mari Bardona for her continued work on these uh, department board policies as recommended by the California School Board Association. This policy as well has been reviewed by the appropriate instructional stakeholders and the policy review committee. Additionally, the Board of Education has re reviewed this board policy and has made no further adjustments. Um, staff and policy review president uh, Terrence Williams is going to speak this evening and I believe uh, Ms. Angela Blackshear uh, and Kimberly Hirsch will speak on this policy. Uh, to uh, give us some insight as to the process um, and then uh, just the insight that they provided on this particular policy as well. President Williams. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, as Darvin mentioned, my name is Terrence Williams, president of the Policy Review Committee, and I am here with Danielle Rucker, Angela Blackshear, and Kimberly Hirsch representing the committee. Uh, the committee's sole function is to review district policies, practices, and procedures with staff and to determine whether any are unjust, unfair, perpetuate with system racism, or create structural barriers to diversity, equity, and inclusion in district governance, employment, or enforcement of district affairs. The committee then provides a report back to the Board of Education with any recommendations for change. Uh, committee member Angela Blackshear will speak to the new board policy regarding equity. We'd like to thank you for receiving us and I'll just allowing us this opportunity to present to you tonight. Angela? Hello, good evening. Uh, some of you may remember me. I was here before on behalf of the committee to propose other changes, and I'm glad to be back. Um, we were very interested in implementing an equity policy, since that is the purpose of our committee. And we wanted the board to always have um, or to always be thinking about equity long after this committee is gone. Um, we want to... Um, ensure there is elimination of disparities. And we thought by implementing an equity policy that um, could address that. Um, we're particularly interested in collecting data, evaluating that data to put uh, plans in action and then continually evaluating those plans to ensure that they are effective. Um, we did find that there is um, the California State Board equity policy, and it appeared there aren't many school districts that actually have a policy in place, and Monrovia did not. Um, but we did find one that we used as a benchmark, and that policy, along with the California State policy uh, Board policy, was given to Kathy's team um, to take a look at developing one for Monrovia and they did that. It came back to the committee. We reviewed it, um, requested a few more changes, and that new policy is what is being proposed to you today that we hope you will adopt and um, show your commitment to uh, equity. Dr. Jackson. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation and the explanation behind the equity policy. Um, that is truly why this committee was formed, and um, 
again, I, I praise you all and I, I thank you all for taking this responsibility so seriously. Um, any questions or comments for the committee uh, regarding the equity policy before us? None? I, I would like to note, yes, I, because I have had the privilege of working with these extraordinary individuals, I, this is the purpose of the, the entire committee and their impact is tangible uh, not only in, in the policy, the preceding policy, but also in some other policies that will be coming up this evening. Again, always looking at it from the lens of <coughs> equity and are we making sure that there are no structural or procedural barriers to student success? And then from the other angle, what are we doing to promote it within the policy or administrative regulation? So a personal thank you to the Policy Review Committee for bringing this to our attention to allowing us to achieve higher than anticipated. And again, this is a direct result of, of, of these fine individuals here. So I'm so proud to be working alongside them. Great. Thank you, Dr. Trozian. Thank you, committee, uh, for presenting. And if it's okay with the uh, board, then we can bring this back on consent for the next uh, meeting. All right, if there. Thank you very uh, much. Uh, President Trabanti, what just a question, oh, please? I'm sorry, I missed your hand. <coughs> That's Go okay. Um, when it comes back um, as a, as a policy, I would like to have a one year review on it, please. I think of all the things that are gonna be coming forward that this will be the most important because it's the backbone of everything that we're looking at. I'd look, look at it again in a year and that way we keep the document alive. Uh, we, we're, we're a governmental agency and we have a book full of policies. This policy here is gonna be the guiding uh, directive on everything that we do. And I would like to keep it as current as possible. So there may be something else that comes up, and if we just review it in a year, I, I think that we would be better off for it. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. That's a very good suggestion, and uh, we'll make note then in, that this policy will be re reviewed on an annual basis. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate all your time, particularly on this particular policy. I have a procedural question, Doctor. Um, so these two items were removed from action, so we don't have to vote on them, correct? It's a first reading, so there first would reading. not be a, okay. a vote. All right, we were slightly out of order there, so I wanna make sure that we're getting back to the right spot. Um, informational reports and presentations. California Dashboard Indicators Report, Dr. Sue Kaiser. And uh, to the Policy Review Committee members, while you're wel welcome to stay, you're also welcome to <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. listen in evening. only if you wanted to by turning off your camera <laughs> and <laughs> muting yourself. Enjoy your Thursday evening. <laughs> 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 Appreciate you. Good evening, Board President Travanti, Board, Superintendent Tarosian, fellow cabinet members and community. Tonight it gives us great pleasure to present the California Dashboard Indicators Report. And I have my partner, Courtney Glass, who is going to be um, guiding us through the bulk of our information here. Before Courtney starts, I just wanted to give a little bit of an explanation as we get into this. Um, as we know, the, the dashboard with our achievement has been on hold because of the lack of state testing that we've had. And those state testing pieces are actually considered the state, ac ac the state indicators. This report is on the local indicators, and the local indicators are indicator one, two, three, six, and seven, and you will have explanation of those. So as you were looking at the 
report if you notice that there were some numbers missing that was with intentionality. Um, and so what are the missing numbers? The missing numbers would represent our academic progress in language and math, the English language art, the, the English language learner progress, the chronic absenteeism, the grad rate, the suspension rate, and college and career for grade 11. And so those are, are considered the state indicators, and those are automatically reported to the public. These are the local indicators that are reported to the public via this vehicle of a board meeting, and then they also will appear in our LCAP. And Courtney will walk us through then numbers one, two, three, six, and seven. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kaiser. Uh, President Travanti, Board of Education, Dr. Tarosian, Cabinet, Public. Uh, thank you for the, the chance to hear us out uh, this evening. So yes, we are, uh, we are talking through what we call the, the California Dashboard Local Indicators, um, the, the big things that get the attention in December when the dashboard comes out are uh, the, the ELA scores of blue and green and, and yellow and orange and red and the math scores and the, the EL uh, progress indicator and, and those sorts of, of identifying things that we've had for, for quite a while. But in addition to that, uh, we have our local indicators. So um, we, will, we will be posting this to, to the state, to the CDE uh, in, uh, I believe, a, a window opens uh, for us to post these in uh, August or September. Um, and then they are part of the, the public presentation of the dashboard uh, in November, December. So um, again, as Dr. Kaiser said, uh, I will be speaking about five of them. So the LCFF, or Local Control Funding, um, priority number one um, is our appropriately, appropriately assigned teachers. Um, and that is all Dr. Jackson's office to make sure that our teachers are teaching what they are uh, trained and credentialed to teach, our access to curriculum. Um, that's Dr. Kaiser and myself making sure we have the correct, appropriate, state approved, board approved curriculum. And then our safe, clean, and functional school facilities. These all come through the Williams report. Um, we have been 100%, and we will continue to be 100% through the hard work of, of everybody making sure that our students have what they need when they come to school. LCFF priority number two is the implementation of state academic standards. Uh, this one is focused on having materials, and we do have materials that are aligned. Uh, when I get to stand up here later for a little bit longer, uh, we'll talk about materials that we support through the LCAP, but this is also materials supported through the general fund for the basics of the math books and the English books and science books and so forth. And then also professional development, that's the other big half of uh, LCFF priority two, is making sure that our teachers and our staff are up to date with the most recent uh, strategies to work with our students. Number three, uh, a big focus here, a big focus in our LCAP is parent family engagement. Um, and this uh, remains a big focus for us. Again, we'll hear about it in our LCAP, uh, but this is a, a priority from the state priority when I presented a couple weeks ago with our, our ELO, our Expanded Learning Opportunities Grant. Uh, just continue to focus on uh, doing what we can to get our stakeholders, all of them, involved in uh, school and in the school community. We skip four and five, as Dr. K talked about. Priority number six. School climate, um, we don't have the data yet, uh, but we did give the California Healthy Kids Survey at the end of the school year. We give this uh, to our seventh, ninth, 11th graders uh, each year. It was every two years, but then a few years ago we decided to do it every year. Um, it does take a couple months to get that data back, but once we have that data, it will uh, it will be reported here, and again, it will become part of uh, the LCAP. We will look at certain questions and make sure those are focuses in the LCAP to ensure that we're getting uh, the student response to the climate that we are creating at our schools. And finally, number seven, 
although there are eight, um, but uh, Dr. Kaiser spoke about number eight. Uh, number seven is the access. The key word here is access to a broad course of study. Um, this goes to, uh, to what Dr. Jackson was just speaking about with the, the board policy committee, just making sure that uh, all of our students have the opportunity to access all of the different uh, programs and opportunities that we have throughout Monrovia Unified School District. So uh, we continue to increase those programs and increase the opportunities to be a part of those. Um, so yes, that is the presentation on the California Dashboard Local Indicators. Are there any questions? Any questions or comments? Jennifer? Thank you, Mr. Glass. Um, just a clarification on priority number six. Um, you mentioned that the California Healthy Kids Survey is given to 7th, 9th, and 11th graders every two years, but now it's given every year? So the, the requirement is every two years, okay. but I believe it was about four years ago. I'm not 100% sure on that date, but we started giving it every year uh, above and beyond the requirement because we wanted more data to ensure that we were doing what we needed to do to meet the priority. Does anyone realize that if we're giving it every two years in seventh, ninth, and 11th, we're only surveying the same kids three times? Understood, and and, and again, that's that's the state requirement is the every two right. years. Right, I, I applaud the fact that we're surveying more frequently, but <laughs> no, I absolutely. wanted to that, clarify yeah. that. But, but then you can get you can get longitudinal and, and, and change data when you're asking the same kids. If you do it every year with seventh, ninth, and 11th, you're comparing almost apples and oranges. You're you're a math person. You you understand yes, but that. But you can but, you uh, can call that data and make sure you can get both if you survey <laughs> them every year. Absolutely, that's why we're doing that. Perfect. Thank you very much. I appreciate of that. Of course. Any other questions, comments? Rob, you good? Okay. Thank you very yes. much. Did he say he said, yes? He said. Oh, good. Rob. I'm good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Okay. Did you have another part of your report? Uh, I thought I have consent agenda, right? Yeah. Okay. I know you're trying to throw me off. That's okay. <laughs> Routine items of businesses pla business placed on the consent agenda have been carefully screened by members of the staff. Um, and upon request of any person, item on the consent agenda may be considered separately. Uh, we had no changes to consent items, right? Okay. So can I have a motion? Move consent. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Ms. Huff, can you call roll, please? Board Member Golar? Yes. Board Member Anderson? Yes. Board Member Lockerbie? Yes. Board Member Hammond? Yes. Board President Travanti? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Ms. Huff. And now, um, I'll make sure I have that one. Educational Services Solution Tree Inc. Purchase Agreement, Dr. Sue Kaiser. Yes, good evening. Um, the Board of Education is requested to approve a purchase agreement with Solution Tree Incorporated to provide virtual professional development to teachers for the implementation, um, for teachers and administrators for implementation <laughs> with school leadership teams. And this training is a training that is um, called Grading from the Inside Out. Um, solution tree and the presenter's name is Tom Shimmer who has done much work with um, equitable grading practices and looking at how do we get kids to mastery um, in in terms of the the grading is about the learning it's not just about the grade and so the training is a continuation of what we began a couple of years ago with our professional learning communities um, training where our administrators went to a conference and then many of our leadership teams followed. And then we have continued that training and that work in the school district every single week, every month. And so this is a continuation of that now looking at grading practices. 
And so um, this will be a virtual professional development beginning with the administrators um, in June and then with our secondary teachers in August. Um, and the total cost of this is $8,630, and it will be paid for with a continuing school improvement grant that was um, given to the school district um, as part of the program improvement cycle um, two years ago. Thank you, Dr. Kaiser. Any questions or comments for Dr. Kaiser? Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Kaiser. Um, is, is this something that will be uniformly applied throughout our district, or, or is this, are we rolling it out slowly, or is this optional? Um, the training is not optional. The conversations are not optional. It is a, 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 a process that we're engaging in to start with the training in terms of the why. Okay. Why are we looking at this? Why are we looking at doing away with that zero to 50 in the grading scale that, that is not an, an equal distance, giving the why behind that? And we're starting with our administrators so that we have a deep learned understanding of that so that the articulation can be very clean and clear. Um, and then years ago, um, I, it, it's more than 15 years ago, probably 20 years ago, the elementary schools everywhere um, switched over from ABCDF to the rubric grading scale. So elementary schools have already made this change many, many years ago. Secondary schools have not um, universally. Um, I found one district that has in policy in Placer County. And we've looked at their policy language and, and we've taken it actually to the policy review committee as we're looking at moving our district in that, po in that position so that we can indeed end up where we have a, a school board policy that indicates how we do this. And so starting with the why, mm -hmm. um, with our administrators and then our secondary teachers, so we have deep understanding and a deep learning about this, and it's not just something that is, is put out there for our teachers. It takes a little bit of time to get the understanding there. Okay, thank you. Placerville is, is very innovative, so I, I appreciate the, <coughs> the correlation with their district. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hammond? Uh, Dr. Kaiser, is there a timetable for getting the understanding? We have our first training in June this month with our administrators. We have the next training in um, August with our teachers, and the, the administrators will be working with the teachers after that on implementation. I do not have a time frame for how long that will take. But the train has Would left the think station. Yeah, I'm more about worried about when the train comes back. Mm -hmm. So would could I assume that we might see something before Christmas? That would be the goal. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments for Dr. Kaiser? Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Kaiser. And and action items so can I entertain a motion so moved second we have a motion and a second any additional discussion Ms. Huff can you call roll please board member Anderson yes board member Lockerbie yes board member Hammond yes board member Golar yes board president Trevanti yes motion carries 5-0 thank you Ms. Huff Dr. Kaiser, I believe you are up next for the public hearing for local control accountability plan. Ms. Huff, do we have any public comments? We do not. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. There are none. Okay, thank you very much. Dr. Kaiser. Thank you. The Board of Education is requested to hold a public hearing to take testimony from the public um, to and discuss the updated local control accountability plan prior to its adoption June 23rd 2021 and the rationale behind this is that the LCAP is an important component of our local control funding formula 
it is the plan that defines our funding formula. And under the local control funding formula, all districts are required to prepare the LCAP, which describes how the districts intend to meet their annual goals for all pupils with specific activities to address state and local priorities that are identified in the Ed Code. As part of this requirement, the three-year accountability plan is to be reviewed and revised on an annual basis with input from all stakeholders. The LCAP review was conducted as part of the district strategic planning team utilizing surveys and stakeholder input. Funding for our unduplicated pupils is contingent upon the annual review and approval process of our LCAP. And so with that, Mr. Glass is going to be assisting in um, drilling down the details of our LCAP um, and our budget. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kaiser. Um, just a moment. So at this point, I'll open the public hearing for the Local Control Accountability Plan, also known as LCAP. Go ahead. Thank you, President Trevanti. Um, yes, uh, so, um, and just so you know, in case you did do your reading, for, for those of you that do your reading, have your questions. I brought the whole thing. <laughs> and if you say turn to page 102, I'm ready. I'm ready for you, Ms. Golar. I'm ready. So um, uh, what you did receive, uh, what the LCAP is, it has three parts this year. Uh, the first part, Ms. Huff, is uh, the annual update. Um, and because there was no, um, oh, that didn't get fixed. I apologize. Uh, this is uh, the annual update is actually for two years. It's for the school year uh, 2019-2020 and for 2020-2021. So last year due to the pandemic and school closures, there was no uh, there was no LCAP, there was no finalization. We had started it, um, but then everything fell off a cliff as we know, and so we did not finish the process. And then in the school year 2020-2021, there was no um, there was no LCAP. We had our our what what the state called the LCP, what we called here locally the LCAP two, the Learning Control and Accountability Plan, uh, which we approved. And so the first 103 pages of of the report was the annual update to those two plans, reviewing how we spent our funding in 2019-20 and 2020-2021. So that's the first part, the big chunk. And then the next piece is what's called the budget overview. And the budget overview is for this upcoming year. It is. It has uh, the budget that uh, Ms. Wu's office will present um, with the, uh, the, the 6.8 million that is in the LCAP and then the, the big total and some of our other title funds as well. So that's about three pages in the middle. And then after the budget overview, we have the LCAP. Dr. Kaiser. Okay, um, as we look at our LCAP, our LCAP was developed for the first time many years ago. And I, I see Jennifer shaking or nodding her head. She was part of that first team where we were really grappling with what does it mean to create goals for the whole district, you know, el elementary school all the way through senior year in high school and focus on our unduplicated kids and how do we extract the, the needs for our district. And what we landed on as a committee and as a group of, of teachers, administrators, community members, um, and board members, what we landed on were three goals that have had such great endurance for our district. And the three goals, number one, we're an educational organization, it's student achievement. That's our profit margin, isn't it? Um, it's where we, we judge how well we're doing. How are our kids doing? So student achievement was our goal number one. And then as we looked at student achievement, we know that a big piece of education is creating students that are literate in individuals. And where is that, that pinnacle or that tipping point for literacy? All the research points to third grade. And so we chose third grade literacy as goal number two. 
Now you may wonder why third grade literacy is so narrow. Well, sort of. It's all the literacy leading up to third grade, and then if students haven't met the benchmark by third grade, it's those intervention pieces after. So it's really taking a look at what are we doing for literacy um, universally in our system with the pinnacle being third grade. And then our third goal if student, is student engagement. If students aren't engaged, they're not going to learn anything. And so what are those things that put the pizzazz in school that students will remember far after graduation? I don't know about any of you, but I don't remember some of those really cool math lessons that my teachers taught. The grammar lessons, it's a blur. But boy, can I remember being in the band, um, being in the Model United Nations, and the country I was assigned to was Albania. And I never would have known where Albania even was but I represented that country. Those are the things that kids remember. And that's what engages them. And for some of our kids, that's why they get up in the morning and come. And so we really focused on what are those things. And so there are things like the arts, um, our technology programs, some of our science programs, the, the extra pieces that we weave in that will draw kids into school, and all of our services for SEL and counseling are found in goal three. And so these three goals have remained consistent as enduring goals as the large goals. Then we have lots of sub goals under each one. And so that's become the structure and the organization of our LCAP. One other thing that I want the public and want our board to understand about our LCAP is before it ever gets to the board meeting, um, we take it through lots of input and looking at a lot of data. And then after it gets written on paper on that folder that Courtney has, it is sent to the County Office of Education. And I remember sitting with Courtney um, two years ago, and we had 900 corrections to make. Let me repeat that. We had 900 corrections to make. I thought we were going to be there for an eternity. Um, and Courtney said, no, we can do this. And within three days, we had it done. Um, but it is read, it goes through a very um, close scrutiny of people that understand the compliance and the laws behind it. And so we take our services very seriously, and we don't use these funds, our su supplemental and concentration funds, for things that don't pass muster through the county. And the intent of, of the funds that, 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 that represent our supplemental and concentration are for our unduplicated kids, our English language learners, our foster and homeless students, and our students who are on free and reduced lunch. And we want to make sure that we're serving our, our populations. And many of these activities are principally directed at these students, but they're open to all. So it doesn't mean that it's completely ex exclusionary, but it's principally directed. And so the big why behind it is to bring this group of students in. It may draw everybody else in also, and that's OK with us. And it's all right with the county. So I'm going to let Courtney take us through the details. Sue got to do all the fun stuff. I get to grind through the minutia here. So. Uh, goal number one is our high academic achievement. Um, the, the total budget is approximately $6.8 million for the LCAP and with $4.3 million uh, budgeted to goal number one. Um, that's a significant amount. That's a big chunk, uh, about two thirds of it. And, and that makes sense, right? We're an educational institution. Uh, we want our kids uh, achieving academically. So the way that most of this uh, presentation is divided up is, is we've got people and we've got programs. People means uh, salaries, specifically salaries to uh, personnel here in the district office. Program, or excuse me, in the district, not just the office, uh, everywhere. The uh, programs is um, is is different. Exactly what it says. Programs. Some are district wide. Uh, some are grade level specific. Some are site specific. But it's different programs. So those uh, those funds could go towards. Uh, any any number of things and we'll review those and then for goal number one uh, there's this third bullet 
gold numbers uh, two and three do not have the third bullet, but gold number one does, and this is our site funds. Uh, we have a designated amount of funding for each school site uh, based on their enrollment of our EL, foster youth, and low-income students. They receive uh, a particular um, amount of, of these LCAP dollars, and so that is through our uh, goal number one. So how do we divide that up? We have the people. The people in goal number one, we have our instructional coaches or our instructional specialists. Um, we have eight of them, uh, specifically five of them are funded through goal number one because their focus is uh, elementary school math, secondary math, elementary school ELA, secondary ELA, um, and uh, a dual immersion. So those are funded through goal number one. Our data specialist uh, in the district office who supports the instructional coaches, supports the site administrators, supports uh, the district office administrators just in helping pull the data in order to make informed decisions. And then um, our wellness center coordinator at Monrovia High School um, is funded here as well. Part of the salary of that uh, person is funded here. Now, one thing you'll notice before we switch slides um, is these are all in black font. On the next slide, some of the fonts are going to be a purplish or a blue, and that purplish blue represents a significant change from the previous LCAP to the new LCAP, and I'll go into what those changes are. So those are the people representing goal number one. Next, we have our programs. Um, our iCoach program is funded in goal number one. Um, the, the supports for the teachers who are technology specialists at each school site um, are funded here. Our professional, professional development days that we have throughout the school year are supported here for both our classified and our certificated staff. You'll notice the English math and EL intervention is uh, highlighted in purple. Um, we added a significant amount of funding to those, uh, and that was based on um, the, the, the feedback from the stakeholders, that was based on the data, seeing that we'd kind of hit a plateau if we looked at either our reclassification rates for our English language learners, or if we look at uh, some of our other local data, since we don't have the big state data, but we, we needed to uh, do something to kind of kickstart those programs, those intervention programs. So um, that's why that one's in purple. Uh, the LCAP will continue to support the AP program and the AVID program, which is at uh, three of our schools, secondary schools. The next one you'll notice technology supports and science supplemental materials is in blue. We, uh, we did adopt a new curriculum this year for science and uh, as you can imagine, a new science curriculum probably has a lot of fun stuff that could go along with it if you can figure out how to get that fun stuff to go along with it. And this is how we're figuring out how to make sure we can get those things so that, so that we don't have to uh, play a YouTube video about uh, what some cool thing could happen, but we could actually do it. So um, that is the, the goal here is to support those new science curriculum with the many different things that need to go with that. And, and lastly, you see our summer school. Um, our LCAP has supported summer school for our students who are not meeting that third grade mark, the goal number two that Dr. Kaiser spoke about, and our EL students. Uh, all of our students, uh, K-8, uh, who are EL, who are designated EL, are invited to summer school every year. This year's a little different with the other funding and the bigger summer school, um, but we do have summer school every year for those students who are below grade level, specifically that third grade mark we look at for our students K-5 and then our EL students. So that is funded by the LCAP and will continue to be funded when these other COVID relief funds uh, are removed. And lastly, we have our site funds. Uh, I did talk about that a little bit um, just for uh, some, some specific details. These are um, budgeted 
by the school site council, uh, which is made up of uh, at the secondary level, you've got students, parents on all of them, administrator, teachers represented to, to look at, decide on the budget for how um, these dollars are spent. And that goes in uh, what we lovingly call the SIPSA or the Single Plan for Student Achievement, which the school has to um, uh, vote on and approve and adopt every year. And then uh, you as a school board actually see all of those SIPSAs come through uh, as well. So that's their kind of their little version of of what we do. So that is here's a summary of goal number one. Um, and these are just the uh, the changes. Um, so it did go up uh, about four hundred thousand dollars in goal number one. Uh, and you can see the bulk of that is in the programs uh, supporting those two different uh, purple highlights there. We'll go to goal number two. Goal number two is a much smaller goal. Um, and again, as Dr. Kaiser spoke about the specificity of it, um, we have some very specific um, elements to, to the goal. So we've got a little bit of people and a little bit of programs. So we can go to the next one to talk about the people. It's short. We do uh, have an interventionist at all five of the elementary schools and the LCAP covers a portion of their salary. Um, one thing that's not on here is what was removed in the previous uh, year in 2019-20. We had some um, some consultants brought on to support some administrators and do some things with with math, and that was actually removed. And so that's why when we get to the summary slide for goal two, you'll see a drop in the people part, and that's because those consultants have been removed it's not because the interventionists are funded less that actually pretty much held just went up with with the slight increases in salary uh, going to programs for goal number two um, we do support our dual immersion um, intervention programs dual immersion materials spanish or mandarin materials for the school sites um, at the inception of the lcap Dual immersion was new, and so there was a need for just materials in the library. Every time we hit a new grade level, things were needed for the library, for the classroom. Now it's about continuing to supplement the programs as they now middle school, uh, high school, still continuing to do that, but also really refining how we're working with students who need some extra help in those programs as well. So. That leads to the intervention. So this is both for the dual immersion program and also for um, our students in our English programs looking at their reading and writing, specifically fourth and fifth graders who did not meet the third grade proficiency levels. So that's really the focus there. Um, and then this year, some extra money, this LCAP, some extra money is being put in uh, specifically for, for looking at our math programs. Uh, across the board, taking a, taking a hard look at, at what we're doing in math, tr training up our math, uh, ensuring that, uh, that we have the right curriculum, that we're using it well, uh, and, and doing what we need to do to meet those math goals. So a summary of goal number two. Again, here you can see that decrease in the people numbers. Um, and that's what I referred to. The programs uh, did go up, again, uh, to support the intervention processes being put in place. Goal number three. Goal number three is the other big chunk because in order to uh, accomplish goal number one, which is learning, we have to make sure our students are engaged. So that is goal number three. Um, and again, we've got, uh, we've got our people in our programs, so we're gonna take a look at our people on our people slide, one thing you'll notice is there is nothing in purple. Um, there were no changes in, uh, in, in personnel in goal number three. So what are some of the things that are uh, supported in goal number three? We support our director who, who is in charge of college, career, and counseling, um, and her staff. We do a portion of the Monrovia High School counselor salaries in addition to supporting the summer program where they meet with each and every family. 
uh, at the high school for programming purposes. Uh, we fund the elementary counselor. We work with Monrovia Police Department to support the school resource officer. The student support services director, a portion of that salary is that person works closely with our EL and our foster youth uh, and low income students. Our performing arts director and the teachers that are in his program. Uh, a portion of the Monrovia High School uh, administrators, the assistant principals there because of their roles and responsibilities in supporting the programs that are supported by the LCAP. And then the Ed Services Director and Support Staff, that's myself, uh, as I work to ensure that the programs uh, are doing what they need to do for our students. And the programs in our final goal here. Um, the first one, you'll notice that CTE is in purple. Uh, it used to say different things with the pathways. So this isn't so much a financial change as a wording change. Um, but uh, uh, career tech ed is really what those programs are. That's what they, and, and, and now it's not just technology, it's really supporting the career tech ed, the ones that, when I was here a couple weeks ago, the guys from Canyon Oaks and Mountain Park spoke about, uh, the, the programs that Dr. Rial works with at Monterey High School, it's supporting those programs very specifically. And then the marketing and publicity for the district coding uh, at our three coding specific schools, Plymouth, Mayflower, and Santa Fe. Uh, those programs are all supported here. The iCoach program, if you're paying attention, that's the second time I've said that. Um, we do believe that, uh, that technology uh, can be used on both sides. It can be used to engage um, and for some of them, it might fool them, but for others, it just brings them into the learning. So that's where the iCoach uh, program is supported on both the engagement side and the achievement side. Um, you'll notice the technology is, is purple here. One of the pushes is to ensure that uh, we are able to sustain being a one-to-one -one, uh, school district um, to ensure that every student uh, has an MUSD device. And so that's built in here specifically for our coding schools, but then for, for everybody to make sure everyone has a device. Our uh, positive behavior intervention support or our PBIS continuing to support here. And then um, uh, the student engagement, you'll see that one is purple. Uh, that was a, a big push from uh, both of uh, the community meetings, the stakeholder meetings. Um, with a focus on the social emotional learning, uh, the curriculum, the training, uh, support for the different programs at our schools, uh, both through the Renaissance program um, that is in many of our schools, and then also beyond just finding different ways to ensure that our students, uh, along with their families, are engaged in the, the learning process and the school community. So let's look at the summaries of goal number three. You can see the people remained about the same. Uh, there wasn't any purple on that page. It all comes together, see? Uh, the only increase there is really for, uh, for salary increases to cover the change there. Uh, the increase is in the programs uh, to continue to increase what we're able to do for our students who need it. So here's another summary. Um, I'm a numbers guy, I'm a data guy, I, I get it and I see it, but some people might like to see it in all sorts of different ways. So next slide for me, Shoshana. Thank you. So this is just a different way to look at it as opposed to looking at it by goal. It's looking at it by people, programs, and the site funds, and the two different numbers are the previous LCAP and then the current one. So you can see that people, went up a little bit again to cover the salaries program is where the bulk of the increase came to uh to increase those programs does that conclude right. your report that does conclude my report all right thank you very much very much uh, mr glass before we go to comments and questions um miss huff have we received any comments we have not for or against okay 
then that closes uh, the public hearing for the local control accountability plan and we can go ahead and go with the comments or questions from the board yes Tracy Mr. Glass so I, I have to ask a question thank you Mr. Glass very nice it's on right good okay I can hear you all right great um under student engagement I followed everything, even the numbers, increases, decreases, I was good. But then I got a little confused because goal number three is student engagement. And then under programs, can I have a little bit of background or understanding why that final bullet is then student engagement, if um, that's the goal? That, that that is the goal and so why is that there it's because um i would say the the other bullets are are programs to support student engagement in the classroom to support student engagement around the classroom i'll use i'll use uh pbis or positive behavior intervention support that is to create student engagement but we the the line item so to speak or the the idea or what is funded there the training specific is pbis it's those uh intervention the supports specific program. yes that specific program but that does support student engagement Got it. that last line student engagement is funding for things that aren't sort of supporting student engagement but they are directly supporting student engagement part of this uh will go uh, towards Dr. Rial and her programs for social emotional learning and the curriculum we're purchasing for our K-5 students and for the training of the teachers on implementing that curriculum to directly affect student engagement. It's to support the Renaissance program mm -hmm. in order to for that program to specifically and directly create opportunities for student engagement so it's got a lot of little pieces but they are they aren't supporting student engagement they are the very very specifics of student engagement okay so i get it but i don't get it so where i'm losing it is to lose the intentionality of the social emotional the positive school culture and climate via the program of renaissance and whatever other specific programs i understand not listing those but to be intentional with the social emotional factor being um purposeful and removing barriers in terms of engagement do you know see what i'm saying they, they are listed in the official lcap they were okay. not maybe spelled out here in my presentation okay. but if you go into the last uh two goals of the lcap the third part of the big fat packet it that you got it, it does call them out in those actions and in those goals absolutely right. i just absolutely. don't want to lose oh no they're that they're there word for word yes perfect. you can't be vague on that lcap got it I, I could give a little bit of an explanation for the the structure of the LCAP. So we have the three big goals. It's like the um, capital, the um, Roman numeral one, two, and three in the, the outline. And then when you get to these, these are like the capital A, capital B, capital C. And then under that capital um, C where student engagement is, there would then be one, two, three, four. And so that's where that is identified, where the details are. And the purpose of goal three, it is loaded with SEL because we are very intentional with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? If I may be so bold, <laughs> I would like to um, make an observation and um, a correlation and share an opinion. Uh, your third of your three big goals is increased student engagement. 
And previously, uh, in this board meeting, you spoke about the solution tree training and working actively at changing our grading and balancing our, our F, uh, the zero to 50. Um, my observation and my opinion is um, with that huge zero to 50, a child who is a student who's receiving something so far down the gamut that they know they can never reach 51 is going to become disengaged. Um, they will give up. And I want to say thank you and share my appreciation that you have been working so hard because I know I know that you have been working so hard on this and bringing this um, um, change in the grading and the training to understand that to our teachers and to our sites because that absolutely fits into this goal of our LCAP and it absolutely does address student engagement because if if there is a student that is too far out of that uh, unbalanced weight they know they're never going to reach it they've disengaged and they've given up so um, I wanted to make that uh, correlation and uh, thank you both for working so hard on making that come to fruition thank you thank you thank you Ms. Lockerbie Rob do you have anything did have one um, item under programs the English learners intervention can you drill down a little bit further on that what is this as a program how, how is that helping the English learners um, what we are what we are going to do we are actually going to look at it starting in the fall is we are looking at a figuring out what the appropriate supplemental curriculum is for our our English language program um, we have a core adopted ELD program that we are using and will continue to use and will continue to to train and ensure that that is being used but for those students who are not progressing who are not meeting the English fluency levels that need something else we are going to look at a supplemental program to support them somehow and get them moving towards that English fluency and that would be um, from um, an interventionist or, or a small group how, how do how do you apply that I it would it would definitely be a small group how it would be applied specifically would probably depend on what program we ended up going with it could be an interventionist it could be a, it could be the teacher it driven. could be one particular grade level where you know one teacher takes the Yale students for extended time or the students who need even more time while their students go with the other grade level teachers or however that works it would probably depend on uh, the the number of students and the grade level and the need right. would, would be the hope is that we would find a program that can really get specific with those needs of those students Okay, I'd be very interested in hearing more about that when that time comes. Thank you. No other questions and comments? All right. Well, thank you very much for your report. Both of you. Now we'll go on to business services, uh, proposed adopted budget and public hearing for the 2021-2022 fiscal year. Uh, the Board of Education is requested to hold a public hearing to take testimony from the public and discuss the Monrovia Unified School District's proposed adopt budget. Um, I'd like to go ahead and um, open the public hearing for proposed adopted budget for the 2021-22 fiscal year. Ms. Huff, have we received any comments for or against? There are none. Thank you, Ms. Huff. Then I'll go ahead and close the public hearing for proposed adopted budget and Connie Wu. Good evening, Board of President Chavanti, Board of Education, Superintendent Dr. Torosian, Cabinet Community Members. The Education Code required the district to conduct a public hearing for the proposed adopted budget for next school year 
and before the board of final approval on June 23rd. So the last major financial statement the board approved is back to second intern report is back to March of this year. And the district uh, prepared a second intern report based on the governor's January budget assumptions. And this time, when the district prepared the 2021-22 uh, adult, proposed adult budget, we used governor's May revision. So there has been changes from this uh, two gov governor's budget release. So um, first of all, we have a quota, and uh, we are very happy that the governor contributed uh, more money to commit to the success of our K-12 students, especially uh, when we're um, out of this COVID-19. And the second one is the um, a, um, LCFF base grant. Because of the quota increase and the base grant per grade, grade span, the per $88 amount has been increased compared with the January budget versus the May revisions. Next slide, please. Also, the uh, statewide interest uh, um, have been adjusted, adjusted up accordingly. The district also, based on um, the projection, we also um, adjust our enrollment projection back to the second interim report versus the proposed adopt budget. And also based on the attendance ratio, we adjust the, the ADA according, accordingly. Next slide, please. So there, there is difference between the revenue projection for this year and the next year's. So for the this year's, the revenue projection, the LCFF money has been increased because when the time goes by, um, we will, our unduplicated students count percentage is higher when we um, prepare the second intern report because the number is more finalized. So good news is it will bring additional supplemental concentration funding because the supplemental concentration funding is directly correlated with this unduplicated students count. Next slide, please. For the 21-20 school year, uh, we will see that uh, um, LCFF has increased over $600,000. There's also major two reasons. One is the mega quota for 5.07 for the 21-22 school year. And also by the uh, weight average for the undue count, because this year the number is higher, mm -hmm. then the weight will be high. So so we are looking for, um, um, forward to, to receive uh, um, um, as uh, um, the presentation earlier for air cover, Dr. Kaiser and uh, Mr. Grass is um, for the $6.8 million air cap, it is a uh, um, little bit higher compared with this year's. Next slide, please. So for our expanded check assumption, you know that our personnel cost is uh, up to 85% of our budget. So any changes related to the uh, employee benefit uh, um, will be change our project projections. So for major be uh, retirement benefit is car store, car purse district contribution. The car store's um, district contribution in the next couple of years has been increased compared with the second intern report, report. but the car purse does decrease. Uh, in the next couple of years. So that uh, one year uh, cost more and one will mm -hmm. save a little, little bit of money. So the, the major things, uh, as I already reported to the board, uh, um, is a change of the statewide K-2-2 unemployment insurance rate. So that rate has uh, um, been stable for a long, long time for the 0.05%, and the next year will jump to point to 3% as a result of lot more people in our industry claim unemployment insurance, but that is sub subject to investigation. So uh, as a result of investigation, if any person the unemployment insurance think is not deserve, the money will be credited back um, for the entire public school pools. So the move forward uh, is uh, after 21-22, the unemployment insurance rate did decrease to 0.20%. But uh, for the 
increase from 0.05 to 1.23%, it will cost this $376,000. So which means that we have to increase that budget accordingly. Next slide. So we did update our total total uh, restricted general fund cost, and uh, um, I use this Clifton school color. So you will <laughs> so you will see that uh, uh, green bar is our um, um, we update projection as of right now, and we see that our cost um, and cross border will be a little bit less. And uh, the one, one major reason is because the supplement concentration. The district strategically used one-time money, learning loss mitigation money, to support our education. So as a result of that we did not uh, compare with the previous years, we did not spend as much of supplement concentration money, which means that we were able to carry over that funding to the next year. Next sli slide, please. So for the 21-22 um, district unrestricted, um, unrestricted general fund expenditure, because uh, um, the governor said that the next school year we're back to normal, and, and uh, uh, most of the students will come to in classes. And for those students, uh, they are continuing on to distance learning. They will offer independent um, study program. So as a result, uh, we budget all the expenditure back to normal, so, um, such as we were project to the extra hour over team, uh, over time as normal as the 18-19 school year. So we also uh, including the uh, supplemental concentration budget as Mr. Glasses just presented earlier. So you will see that uh, compared with the second intern projection for the next year, as of right now, we budget a little bit higher. But again, this is just a budget, it's a plan. So when the time goes by, we will update the board, the budget versus the actual, we're starting the first intern report of the next year. So this, we will keep the board updated for ongoing. Next slide, please. The ed code uh, always requires us present three-year multi-year projection. So this is a three-year multi-year projection starting 21-22 um, as the first year. And as of right now, uh, the district were able to meet our financial obligation for the next three years, starting with 21-22. So the third year, um, unassigned, unappropriate is around $442,000. Again, board, this number will change, and then anything that happen impact this multi-year projection, we will report the board um, accordingly. Next slide, please. Beside the general fund, which is our major operation fund, we also have uh, some small funds, including adult education, child development, food service, and a fee-based program. So um, I think all this program next year, I expect, will be much better, although we project uh, very conservatively, uh, such as child development program. Governor provides a lot of one-time money so I um, project that uh, uh, that program will be much better when we uh, close the year. But I do want to bring the board attention for the food service. Our food service program have fantastic years. We not only provide over one million meals, our bottom line showed. This is the first time. I'm the sorry, your what? Our bottom lines. Okay. Okay, it's showed because this is the first year we were able to uh, um, have a surplus of over $800,000. See, because of the USDA continue provide a waiver for next school year, so we think that uh, our team will continue to carry, carry on this success to next year. So that's why, boy, you can see that uh, we will, will project that the end of the balance will be higher than beginning from the balance. Okay. So the fee-based program is um, uh, mainly is catering program, international students program, and uh, the Patrick's uh, uh, theater program. And uh, um, I just want to share with the board, I already have been reached by, uh, uh, approached by one of the local family, and they have relative, uh, relative in Germany, and uh, they are interested to enroll one semester in the uh, Monrovia High School. 
So um, um, we're just starting a conversation, but I'm very excited because uh, our program, I think uh, the community um, know that uh, the Monrovia Unified School is uh, offer program for international students. So um, I think with, uh, when we go out of the COVID-19, we will see more interesting uh, international students come to our schools. So next step. Um, after today's public hearing, uh, we will propose the board uh, to adopt our final 21-22 uh, budget at the next board meeting, which is scheduled on June 23rd. And uh, once the governor signed the state budget act, um, most likely is later of this month, um, cons uh, legislatively date is June 30th. So within the 45 days as required of the uh, education code, we will revise our budget. And as the board know that we are um, in the final stage for the negotiation, and we have a reached a tentative agreement with, uh, with the bargaining association. And once that finalized that, uh, we, we also will um, post the AB 1200 um, report. And we are in the process to prepare the, that report and we do have a requirement to uh, submit to the legal 10 working days before the board final approval as well as available for the public for to review and to look. So uh, our plan is next Monday, we will um, make sure we make our AB 1200 um, information available for the community and for the association. And we also submit a report uh, um, to the LEGO. Um, and if board interesting, and I will send information to Dr. Torosian and he, uh, she will send it to each of you. So um, this is the last um, mm, fiscal year for the 2021 20, uh, school year, and the business service department will prepare for the year and the closing uh, for the book. And uh, there, um, our 2120 school year is uh, August 18. So we are looking forward to see the kids come to our school. That will conclude my um, presentation. Any question from the board? Thank you, Ms. Wu. Um, any questions or comments? Jennifer? Thank you, Connie. Um, I, on, on the very last slide, I just had a, a question about the, the procedure of this. This mm -hmm. is the first time, the first go around, my, my first yes. rodeo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so we're posting uh, AB 1200 on Monday the 14th. That's correct. We are um, AB 1200 uh, um, request the district before the board uh, final approve the AB 1200 report. The district at the least uh, before the final approval day, the district is required to make it available to public review and submit the leg uh, submit the report to legal for approval ten working business days. So that's a minimum. So um, we, um, our plan is uh, once we have the information, because uh, this last month of the, uh, of the fiscal year, we try to provide information as early as we can. And then we can, um, um, Dr. Torosian will schedule the meeting with the board accordingly. Uh, our plan is, do you want to share? Um? Certainly. Uh, so with the AB 1200, which is the official certification that both uh, Ms. Wu and I will need to sign and submit to the Los Angeles County Office of Education, certifying that for the, uh, this school year, the 2020-2021 school year, uh, are uh, any uh, n negotiated items can be covered through our current budget and so two things have to happen one is uh, submission of that report to the county superintendent and the second is a public uh, review of that information and that report and that will be done by posting it here uh, at the district office and it'll be available for review again beginning June 14th uh, 10 working days after that is when the board can actually take action and approve it. So it sounds to me that we need to take action on this between the 28th and the 30th of June. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? 
Yes, we would need to call a special board meeting for that effect. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, just to piggyback that on, when you say post, does that mean on the website or here physically in the district office? I uh, we are trying to clarify that now, uh, okay. and and uh, in terms of what I've read, it's however we decide we want to post it. Well, and uh, if we're going to be transparent about these things, you should do it in the um, manner that the public would have most or greater access. So then that should probably be the website, especially in our current circumstances. Absolutely. So we can post it on the website uh, in the business services department, and we'll have a, a, a notification here as well, which is something we typically do for a board meeting anyway. Yeah. Thank you, Kathy. Anybody else um, have any questions or comments? Question. Uh, Ms. Wu, I just wanted to clarify something that is on uh, slide three mm -hmm. under state revenue assumption changes, enrollment and ADA projections update. I under the ADA column, yes, that is a dollar amount, correct? No, that's the um, ADA. Um, that's, um, let me clarify. I, I know it is confusing. Um, there's two things uh, around uh, with ADA. Is the ADA itself is uh, um, we have uh, um, uh, kids and uh, whether the kids come to the school each day within the 180 day instruction time. The other thing is how the state uh, funding us. So which means that uh, um, the full one, uh, let me share with you. I know it's confusing. So the, the, um, the first slide, please, Mr. Huff. So the first slide is say that uh, LCFF, um, you have a do the dollar amount, right? The K23, 4 to 8, Wait, the I'm, not, I'm not on that. Okay, so okay. can you do the first? Yeah, so, so the, f the first slide, this is the how the uh, state fund us per right. ADA. I know it's very confusing. Right, I yeah. understand that. Yeah, but the, the, that, the ADA that, here. That, but that's, if we're looking at this one. Yeah. That's the percentage, that's COLA. The second one. The first increased cost of living, the COLA. That's right. So you're referring to the LCFF that, That's correct. Diagram? Uh, actually, yeah. uh, how about if we go to that next slide, the first, the slide that you were referencing, yes, that slide next slide, let's go there. The okay. And let me simply explain that uh, our, while our enrollment is, you know, 51.78 and is projected to be 51.44 next year, we are only funded based upon the number of students who show up. So absences count so against the, us. So that's the CBEDS number? Yes. Okay. Uh, no, excuse me. No. It is Projected. average daily attendance. And so our, uh, if we had 100% attendance, that multiplier would be 5144. Our attendance is a closer to 94.7 which is the number you see under ADA. And so that multiplier goes, it, it decreases because we don't have uh, the highest of. So that is actually the ADA. Yes. I got thrown off by the decimal. Right. <laughs> um, so that is the ADA. Correct. And so that's the yeah. multiplier to uh, the chart that Connie was referencing earlier. Right. Thank you for the yeah, clarification. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Connie? Um, I do have uh, something. So each board member received this binder right here, and it's it's rather thick. Um, there was a lot of reading here, and a lot of technical reading, and I'm sorry, no one's seeing that. Yeah, I guess. Just want to demonstrate to the public that. Thank you, Jennifer. I didn't realize. Each board member received one of these uh, thick right. binders of information that can that contains the entire uh, adopted budget for 21-22 school year. Has a lot of information, um, and so I do appreciate 
the summary that you give us, the presentation that you give us, that you highlight the important information. But this is a pu public document if anyone is, uh, wants to review this. But my, um, I have something highlighted here, just a second, okay. Uh, my concern is we're using the projections of uh, 5144 for um, this next budget year. And then after that, it's 5,064. We're showing the decline in enrollment, the trend, and then the year after that, 4,989 pupils for 2023-24. So um, we were talking about the ADA, and if this stays the same, um, of the projections, 51.44, then we're going to be okay. But as soon as it goes down from there, if the projections are off in any way, and we had a very strange year this last year, and I know we've been held harmless, um, but we're going to hit a point where we're not going to be held harmless. Um, and so all the parents out there that are listening that had TK and kindergarten students that um, we understand it was a difficult situation to have little ones in front of a screen, but please do come back to the district because it will make a big impact on um, if we go below that number, it's going to impact our budget eventually. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, again, this is a public document. Anyone in the public is welcome to review this budget, adopted budget and all its wonderful details. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Connie, uh, for put, you and your staff for putting this together. But I know that there's a lot of hours involved and uh, evening and weekend hours. And I know this weekend you'll be working on the AB, what was it, for, um, and getting that ready for uh, posting on Monday. So good luck this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. I want to take this opportunity to thank David and his team. Yes, please let them know. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to human resources, uh, the MUSD school calendar, Dr. Jackson. Yes, Board President Trevanti, members of the board, Dr. Tarosi and cabinet and community members. The Board of Education is requested to approve the district calendars for the 2022 through 2025 school years. The Monrovia Teachers Association, California School Employees Association and the district agree to these proposed uh, school calendars. It is now being presented to the Board of Education for final improvement. Uh, these calendars do meet the Ed Code for minimum amount of instructional days as well as instructional minutes. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Any questions or comments regarding the uh, calendars? Rob, nothing? Okay, then I'll enter. What, real quick, oh. I'd like to thank everybody for the multi-year calendar. It makes families' lives demonstrably easier when they can look into the future and see when they can schedule uh, vacations and things like that. Thank you. I, can I piggyback on that and ask that it be posted on the website as soon as it's approved? So uh, it, it's very handy. I know I've used it as a parent uh, for years. So. If we can just have it put on the website once it's approved, thank you. Duly noted. All right. Can I entertain a motion? So moved. A second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Ms. Huff, will you call roll, please? Board Member Lockerbie? Yes. Board Member Hammond? Yes. Board Member Golar? Yes. Board Member Anderson? Yes. Board President Trevanti? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Ms. Huff, and thank you, Dr. Jackson. We'll move on to Board Policy 6172, Gifted and Talented stu Student Program and Accompanying Administrative Regulation. Dr. Kaiser, is that you? All right, thank you. And as Dr. Kaiser gets her paperwork together for this presentation, let me also say that the Policy Review Committee has been busy and they had their hand in this one as well. Again, making sure that every student has access to the very finest of opportunities within our school district. Thank you. Yes, we do appreciate their efforts. First of all, board, I would really like to um, just 
pay thank you to the Board Policy Review Committee and the way that they thoroughly look at every word in these policies. Um, and so as we worked on the, the gate policy, the, the wording and, and the pieces of this policy were quite simple and the CSBA recommendations were quite straightforward. There are a couple of um, items that were encouraged by the Policy Review Committee and then Board Member Lockerbie and Board President Maritza Travanti also had some input that um, I'll be talking a little bit about. So um, the Board of Education is requested to receive for first reading Board Policy 6172, Gifted and Talented Student um, talented student program and its accompanying administrative regulation as recommended by the California School Boards Association. As part of the Board, Board of Education's commitment to review and update all MUSD board policies and administrative regulations, Educational Services has conducted its annual review of the department's board policies and the administrative regulations and is presenting this policy for review and, and approval. And so um, this policy, the um, gate policy, when we compared it to the CSBA, um, the policy contains revisions that are recommended by CSBA for board policy 6172, the gifted and talented student program. This policy has been reviewed um, by the all appropriate instructional stakeholders and the policy review committee prior to presenting it for the first reading. And so as we look at this policy, the CSBA recommended language is um, pretty clear in the policy and you'll see that the red strike strikeouts are things that were taken out and then the red um, that does not have strikeouts were the additions. Um, where we had some language that is specific to Monrovia is that as we look at our gate programs, we were noticing in practice that there was some um, in some areas that did not have good coherence, and that was among our elementary schools. And so what we talked about doing to, b to bring about communication and coherence is to convene a gate advisory committee that will offer guidance for the program comprised of parents, teachers, and administrators. And this advisory committee will meet a minimum of two times a year. And its purpose is to come together and to offer guidance and to ask some, some probing questions that we could take back to our administrators. And you'll see in the, the second um, edition is where there will be some implementation changes. So the gate program planning shall be written into the elementary single plan for student achievement as Courtney referred to lovingly as the SIPSA for each elementary school, thus attaining the approval of school site council and consequently the Board of Education, closing that communication loop so that from school to school, um, the community knows what the gate program is consisting of. Um, we do get questions about, you know, what is it? And it, it, is it just Astro Camp? It's much more than Astro Camp. It is the daily education of our students. We have a responsibility to meet students where they are, whether they are below level in their learning or whether they're above the level in their learning. We have the responsibility to meet them where they are and to take them to the next level. And that needs to be communicated with this population as well. So with those two additions, um, and the CSBA recommendations, this is what we, we are bringing forward tonight. Thank you, Dr. Kaiser. And yes, I'm, I'm smiling over here. <laughs> um, any questions or comments? Rob? Well, I, I am very pleased. Um, as you know, I kind of nitpicked this um, and it's it's nothing against the the committee. They did a fine job on here, but I I still felt it was lacking um, some teeth. And I'm really happy that we have incorporated those gate program elements, and that it will be part of the um, the plan for each elementary school. That is wonderful. Um, I don't want to lose students because we're not challenging them at whatever level they're at, and this ensures that our brightest kids in the class are going to be challenged 
and have other opportunities as well. So I, I'm very pleased. Thank you very much for bringing this forward. Was this a first reading? Yes, it was. Okay. And if everybody um, is good, we'll bring it back on consent. Thank you, Dr. Kaiser. Um, and next we have board policy 2121 superintendent's contract. Thank you, President Trevanti, members of the board. The superintendent's contract board policy had not been updated in quite some time. And so we were able to uh, better delineate the components that should be included within the, the, uh, the contract based upon the California School Board Association. And the more uh, substantive change is that of the termination of the contract. Uh, because it had not been updated in quite some time, the law had changed, but our policy had not. And uh, it is the maximum settlement for the termination of a contract is now 12 months and not 18. So that has been updated. Of course, we would have always followed the law. Actually, of course, we hope never to need this clause. However, it's always nice to be in alignment with education code and government code. Thank you, Dr. Tarosian, and thank you, Jennifer, for bringing that forward. Um, you identified that uh, discrepancy. Any questions or comments? Are we good with bringing this back on consent? All right, thank you very much. We'll move on to pending board issues. President Trevanti, members of the board, in reviewing the the cyclical reports, I I do notice that the music uh, art community theater report is scheduled to be presented on the 23rd at our next board meeting, and I am going to uh, propose suspending that until the following year when we actually have community theater returning and a more robust plan. Uh, so with your permission, I'd like to do that. And I would like to ask the board to consider, uh, we will be scheduling board walks. I'd like to get that on your calendars sooner rather than later. Uh, we can start at the elementary levels uh, and begin uh, scheduling those for next year, uh, as well as scheduling a date for our state of the schools. So we'll work on scheduling those uh, and hopefully fill these uh, to be determined dates by our next board meeting. Sounds great, Dr. Terosian. Any um, issues with the suspending the arts, the community arts? Okay. I wanted to add something. I don't know if it should go here or under new business. You can um, direct me. Um, I would like to propose next year uh, taking a look at where our board meeting falls in terms of graduation. And I would like to, instead of adjusting it by a day, adjust it by a week, if that is something that is um, possible. I'm confident the next superintendent would really appreciate that. <laughs> so would I. <laughs> is that something that we can put on? Does it go on pending, or how does uh, new how do we do that? Or? We could we could just make that change. It does okay. not have can to be on that? pending. We can uh, if that's something that the board is interested in. Uh, it is certainly something that we can accommodate. Uh, I will confirm with Ms. Wu as well as Dr. Kaiser to make sure that all the requirements for posting of anything is done and we have the 10 days so that we don't have any special meetings required for that reason. So we'll have to do some, uh, just some calendaring to make sure, but I, I am confident that that would be embraced by the entire cabinet and Ms. Huff in particular. <laughs> Well, thank you for making that easy. I appreciate that. Thank you, Celine, for bringing that up. I like all of you, but we've spent a lot of time together this week. <laughs> is that it for pending issues? Yes, it is. Thank you very much, and we'll uh, go on to old business. Regular Board of Education meeting scheduled for June 23rd at 7 p.m. and also July 28th at 7 p.m. 
under new business, uh, we will be holding a lobby dedication here in the district office for me in honor of Mimi Mincy. We will be renaming or naming the lobby in her name. That is June 29th at 10 a.m. Summer school, all grades start June 17th. Rise and shine for summer school. Um, before I adjourn the, the meeting, I'd like to close the meeting in memory of two special individuals. First, Marjorie Marjoram, aunt of district custodian Danny Robinson, who passed away recently. Marjorie leaves behind two devoted children and extended family. Next, Martha Meza, uh, mother of clerical assistant Veronica Escobedo and personnel specialist Abdulia Moreno, passed away recently. Martha leaves behind five children, 22 grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. Martha was a loving sister, wife, mother, grandma, and great-grandma, and she lived a beautiful life with no regrets, full of love and joy, and was always surrounded by her loved ones. Our thoughts and prayers are with both families at this time. I'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 9.34 p.m. Thank you.